clothing repair isn't new, right? But your business model is. It's not something that we've, that we've seen. So I want you to tell us a bit more about the story behind it and how did you get to this concept and this business model? Yes. So of course, sewing is not new, but what is new is an entire generation of people who don't know how to sew. So I, like most of my contemporaries, did not go through learning how to sew at school. Sewing is not commonplace among young people. Equally, going even to the high street and having a relationship with your tailor is not something that is connected to young people. And equally, they are part of this sort of convenience economy where they're used to things like taxis and food and beauty services at their fingertips on their phone. So although the concept isn't new, it, because the market and the, and the sort of generations are new, it's very necessary to keep up with the times and to make sure that if we do want sewing to happen, given the skill set isn't there anymore, we need to make it easy and accessible and we need to connect those young people to experts who have that expertise. And sort of that's what Sojo is doing. And of course, like I mentioned in the beginning, you launched it during the pandemic and you've received, uh, we've seen that you've received quite a lot of interest and you just mentioned uh, young people. So have you seen like a change in people's attitudes towards uh, clothes and, and these new business models? Or is this part of a bigger shift in the, in the industry? Definitely, 100%. I'd say that over the last year, over the last three years, but particularly the last year, the sustainable fashion movement in and of itself has really taken off and really, really garnered attention, which has been so important. I think that's for multiple reasons. Firstly, sustainability is on people's agenda in general. You know, we're moving, we're in the climate crisis and I think people are really becoming more aware of ways they can be more sustainable. But with fashion specifically and with sort of changing habits specifically over the past year, it's really been about a change in habits that have come about due to the fact that our lives have changed. So slowing down consumption, that's something that's really at the core of what we're doing. Repair isn't about buying new and buying more. It's about looking after what we already have. And I think for the first time over the last year, it wasn't necessary for people to buy outfit after new outfit after new outfit every single week. And instead it was about what do we currently own? And sort of taking a step back and thinking, how much do we actually need and how much should we actually be buying? And I think being able to ride on this wave of like overarchingly people are becoming more ethical and sustainable in their shopping habits. Also they're becoming, you know, more local instead of global mindset. And they're trying to think more about what they currently have. We really, really fit in really well with that sort of, you know, that three pronged sort of opinion that people are changing towards. And I think that the future is really bright for us, but also for other businesses that fit into that sort of new way of thinking that people are taking part in. I saw on your website that you say you want to be more than just an app and a service. Mm. What does that mean and what do you want to be? So for me, I think there's so much more than just being a convenience play and being like, oh, I want to get something repaired and we just want to be a convenient way to do that. It's really more about the broader mission and the wanting to change the fashion industry to be more circular and to be such a key player in doing that. And equally, I think it might be important to touch on here as well. The mission that drove me to this concept and to sustainable fashion in general is really linked to sort of my feminism as well. And that there's this like huge disconnect between people in their clothing and then the women who make them or the people who go into making a garment. And I think one thing that I think is really important to us at Sojo is showing the people who are fixing your clothes and sort of spotlighting garment workers and talking about the people within the industry so that it's humanized. Because I think there's such a disconnect between like between sort of like the people buying and the people making. And I think it's very important to remember the social side and the ethical side when it comes to people as well as the planet as well. So I think for Sojo, yes, we're a convenient service. But we're also hoping to make a change in a broader sense in making the fashion industry circular and in a broader sense by helping people's mindsets and their connection to sustainable fashion on an emotional level as well. 